People, what's going on? I hope you're well. Feels like a, a long time since I've actually spoken to the camera, and it kind of has been. Um, but essentially, I thought I'd just quickly go through the plan of attack for this mesocycle because um, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently, uh, but not really too too much. Try too differently. I thought I'd um, give you an update on my niggle, and then we can get the whole vlog game going. Um, I, li I like the voiceover thing, absolutely fantastic. Um, but I also like doing like picking up the camera, editing that sort of things. However, last week was a deload, and I tried to pick up the camera and to kind of like just speak about a deload and stuff. <sighs> but man, it's so boring, and I think for you guys it, it would have been boring as well. So um, we are basically just going to talk over our new split via a voiceover, and then again we're going to be doing like full days of eating, etc thereafter but essentially you're going to be having two voiceovers um, of a similar pool session not the same one um, this is the pool a the one before was from the pool b session uh, but essentially it starts off with a ductor and then we have a hip hinge and then we'll go kind of from there but this kind of brings us on to our point of or not our point but of what we're going to be doing differently to from last mesocycle to this mesocycle now last mesocycle was just about finding my feet again with kind of intensity and kind of volume etc just mainly like a a rebound mesocycle as it were gain lost tissue uh, recover basically recovery mesocycle you could call it and uh, recover from a very very lengthy prep um i think in the last week of training and then the deload i recognized how long that prep was um and i realized how long it probably would have taken or it has taken me to kind of feel normal again uh, in terms of like training etc and I kind of didn't know what that was as well um, because really I hadn't trained in a gym environment in a mass um, for like nearly two and a half years because obviously I won't say it but that thing that came from another continent um, obviously we were in like lockdowns etc like kind of working out at home this is almost going to fall off um working out at home um and then when i then we did come out of lockdown and stuff um we i was in a prep so essentially yeah i haven't been i haven't worked out in a in a gym in a massing phase and like yeah in a very long time um so like last mesocycle was just about again just like kind of like becoming recovered, uh, building lost tissue and then, or, or regaining lost tissue. And then this mesocycle now is gonna be one of the first mesocycles where we're actively gonna be trying to gain muscle, right? Which is unbelievably exciting. So a few different, a few different things I'm gonna be doing. Number one, I very recently discovered that I don't like hack squats. Um, they kind of, hack squats for me will, really tend to give me an exertion headache um and i haven't really listened to my like i haven't really listened to that side of things um very well like i listen to my body on every single situation and then for some reason hack squats i'm just like right i've just got to do this and then, then i kind of look back at it i'm like why am i why am i getting why am i getting myself to do something that I, my body just simply doesn't like one exercise that my body <clears throat> really does like is a back squat so I'm changing over my hacks to a, to a back squat, um, and I just really want to get like really strong at that. Like I'd love to get like 160 um, for for solid form by the end of the mesocycle, and the hip hinge I'd love to get to, like 200 kilograms um, and, and this mesocycle as well. Um, I hit like 160 today, and it felt pretty damn smooth. And I think I've got 200 in me. Um, it's just a case of just basically keeping that form in um, and not letting it slip, not chasing load prematurely. Like I'm not, like I, I'd love to get there this mesocycle, but I'm not gonna force it by any means just for the sake of hitting that number um, when I know that form potentially would be pretty shit. Um, but essentially this mesocycle with a new split is just gonna come with a lot more volume, um, specifically a lot more volume to my delts um, and my arms are gonna take a little bit of a back burner. Um, so you'll see in a minute that I do all of my back work um, and then I do some like ab work. Just from the simple fact that my back does need a lot of attention. So this is the day after a rest day. 
then I'll hit abs, which is a glaring weak point, and then my arms are going to be put right at the end. Now, my arm exercise selection has gone down, but the volume has like gone up per exercise. So, for example, with the um, like bicep curls, I normally do like two exercises, like tend to be about that, about that, and I'll just do two on one exercise, two on another. I'm actually just going to do four on one exercise. Reason being is. Um, Number one is like set up time, etc. Um, and number two is just going to be like convenience, and I can work the bicep with the exercises that I've selected in its full range. So I don't really see the need in having like two exercises and then two exercises. I'd rather just stay on one exercise and and kind of uh, hit them kind of with four sets. Um, the other thing that's changed this measure cycle is um, I am training with a little bit of RER. Um, but nothing really too drastic. The reason why I'm training with RER is simply because I'm pushing in back squats and um, I've got like a SLDL slash conventional deadlifting of which the both of them are going to be taken to around one RER um, just from a safety standpoint. Like last month cycle, I pretty much said fuck it to everything and just went or tried to go balls to the wall with everything. Hack squats, I can obviously do that. You've got clips and stuff, you can, you can do that like, quite appropriately. Whereas a back squat, if you're like trying to kind of go to failure or something like that, um, then you have no safety. Like you're either going to be up or you're going to be down. Um, of which I would love to be up and not down. So uh, we are going to be training with a little bit of RER. So I can like clickbait this title saying I'm training with RER again, because um, technically I am, but not really. Um, but anything for the uh, YouTube algorithm, because it fucking hates me in a minute. But Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to be basically doing four, four sets of here. So you saw that I'm just going to basically push a lot of more, more energy into abs. Um, I'm also pushing calf raises to the start of my, some of my workouts, which is pretty cool. Um, just so I can attack calves as well, because they're a clear, kind of glaring weak point. Um, and then it's going to be a lot more exercise uh, kind of variation with back. Like you just probably saw in that, in them clips how many different exercises I'm hitting for back. I'm basically covering all bases here. like, um, And the volume, it has actually gone up with them as well. So it's not necessarily a new split as it were, but it's, it's definitely a, a shift off of my mesocycle um, and a shift of volumes for sure. And also a a shift in, in kind of, I suppose it would be like listening to myself, right? Um, Delts are going to be trained every single day, every single, um, yeah, I wasn't, a, I was actually going to, I was contemplating on hitting delts and abs on a complete rest day, which wouldn't make it a rest day, it would actually make it a training day, uh, which the fitness industry does not get, They're like I'm going to train arms and delts or whatever on a, on a rest day, it's like, it's not a rest day, because you train arms and delts, um, but I was thinking about doing that, however, um, <laughs> I have a life. <laughs> quite simply uh, and I've got to do some work so um, yeah that's pretty much it um, we're just basically training with Varia putting a, a lot more volume in place and, and that's pretty much it cool see you in the next one